Welcome to Bamblegum, giving you stories to chew on with Samuel Mui. Hello, welcome to Bamblegum. My name is Samuel Mui. Today with me here is Adrian Chong, CEO of The Apothecary. Am I right? Oh, I don't CEO? think they call it CEO. Director of The Apothecary. Director, yeah. yeah. Well, why not CEO? Uh, I don't have a lot of stuff on the page. <laughs> you call that when you have like well, many executives to be a chief executive. Well, you, you, I'm, okay, I mean, it's just, it's just titles at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, before we start with uh, the main topic of today, why don't you, uh, why don't you sort of introduce us to what is the apothecary and why do you do it? Okay. Uh, a little bit of what we do, the apothecary right now, what we produce solid cologne which is also uh, solid fragrances uh, I, I, I think when we first started uh, I, we, I stumbled across the, a, a product in the states which, which is a solid cologne and I thought to myself hey there's something really interesting that we could actually bring over and they were uh, and the, the brands that started it was about only one two years old mm-hmm. uh, and then I reckon that we could build that in, in Asia Mm-hmm. To, to and, and then, then there's a market growing in, in Asia the the whole men's mm-hmm. grooming market was really yeah. growing was booming yeah. in the past year yeah, yeah. two years as society progresses men become more vain vain yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so yeah we, we, we thought it was a great opportunity to go into a, a, a business a sound business and then mm-hmm. yeah but why solid cologne well the, the, the space is this I, I think the, the entire functionality of a, a solid cologne makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, fragrances has been around for many, many years. Oh, yeah. Right? Like yes. men uses fragrances, women uses fragrances. Uh, well, in, in, in this part of the world, right, it's very interesting. Not a lot of men use fragrances. Just yeah. You know. I don't. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think the, the idea of selling something to a man, right? You, you have to sell the function of it, the convenience yeah, of it. Definitely. And yeah. How it makes sense <laughs> for you to use, right? Yep. So, of course, uh, and we, we, we came out with a solid perfume, which is pocket size. You fit into your pocket, you bring whatever you go, you do it after your gym and not. Mm-hmm. So, so, to a lot of people, it makes perfect sense. It's the perfect grooming tool. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can bring it wherever I go. It's not bulky. It's not too expensive. I, I couldn't afford one. Uh, so, 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 yeah. Okay. So that that's your that's your USP basically. It's yeah. Functional cologne. It's a functional and stylish. portable. And stylish, yeah. Stylish. And portable, yeah. I, I like your cases. Yeah. I, I I don't do your product. I'm not a smell guy myself, but you know I, I do like the I I love the <laughs> I love the small cases. Yeah. Come in. Uh. So everything from the product about the product is is uh, lifted from overseas. Is that right? It started overseas and you brought the design and everything? Yeah, yeah. I, the, the first few was in overseas but um, we we decided to of course came out with our own identity and mm-hmm. build the product and all. And why is your identity right now? Right now. Mm-hmm. The the Porter Carry, right? Um, the the brand, right? The word apothecary comes from a, a old saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's way before doctors. Yeah, they're similar to a pharmacist. Yeah. Right. Uh, the past apothecaries were were entrepreneurs, were marketers, were very good communicators. Mm-hmm. They, they that that is that was the identity when I took take in. They mm-hmm. are very uh, amazing salespeople. Mm-hmm. This take risks and selling things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we sell you rubbish. You know, sometimes the apothecary yeah. sell them people yeah. rubbish. Um, today's apothecary is your Chinese tabit. Mm, yeah. Yeah, right? yeah. So they sell all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. You know, they still today they still sell you bird's nest and yeah. and ginseng and all these things. And questionable and effectiveness. Yeah, <laughs> questionable effectiveness. But people still buy it. You see. Yeah, yeah. And and some people swear by it. You see, mm-hmm. they say, oh, well, my my skin is fairer right now because I have bird's nest every day. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 the brand is that way. We 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 are in that identity mm-hmm. of selling you amazing products. Mm-hmm. Um, and and of course we uh, it, we want it to benefit your life at the same time like mm. you, you feel empowered in some ways so some fragrances empower people some don't okay you know all right all right so um, bringing this product to Malaysia mm. I'm 
Uh, how how is it trying to market it to to Malaysian people? Uh, like how how do you get it out there? How do you get people talking about it? Okay. The it, it has to do with with so the the marketing of the product it, it really depends on on the design, mm-hmm. the whole vibe, mm-hmm. the product, the whole functionality of the product. Uh, when we first started, we we saw in Malaysia I, that we have some quarter of people who who needs to smell it, who mm. needs to touch it, who needs to feel it. So mm. we had to be in shops, mm. right? Uh, having a brick and mortar to us doesn't make sense yet. Yeah. yeah. So we, we partner with people, we, we were placed in all those stores, shops in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. At the same time, uh, our view of the market, right? Mm. We we really thought that that, that the, the market is not just Malaysia, it's Asia. Mm-hmm. So the first yep. thing we, I did was to move out of, of Malaysia already. So we are retail in many, many different countries, you know, with the, it's like we sold in, in Hong Kong, Korea, Taiwan, oh. uh, Singapore, Indonesia right now. Wow. So all these places carries our product. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, uh, Malaysia was as well, mm-hmm. but the strongest market is not in Malaysia. Oh. It's in China. In Taiwan, what you know, it's China, China, and China, Hong Kong. China, Hong Kong. Yeah. What do you think that is? Buying power. Buying power. Just buying power, and we, well, the 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 view is that that you know when we come out product here and if we focus on the pie here, it's far too small, mm. and we had to really open up and and mm. see Asia as the big market. <coughs> mm. Okay. All right. So I mean, in in terms of convincing people, I think you, would you say the product sold itself? In yeah, a way? yeah. The product, the product itself is, is pretty interesting. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say loud la. And when people mm-hmm. see it, you know, yeah. it, 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 creates, it creates a lot of questions. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people ask, "What's this? Yeah. How does it work?" And all these mm-hmm. things. And, and that's great, great. Yeah. And it's working on our ben- yeah. our benefit. So we just, you know, the the whole idea is make sure that it's in everybody's faces. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I can I can see that it's a good product. Um, which, which how long how long have you been uh how, how long has this company been around? Since November two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. So it's one year plus. Now. Relatively young. Yes. And you are already shipping to all different countries. Yes. Wow. Wow. That that's quite. It's quite impressive because most businesses they like the first year is usually the toughest and they don't get to this. Uh, this level of uh, spread and rain. So I can I can see I'm currently in your office right now, and there's I mean it's relatively small, but there's a sizable workforce. It's in, it's enough people, right? Uh, no, this is I mean we're working with our partners, mm-hmm. so so we're actually sh- co-sharing a space. Ah, okay. Yeah. Apothecary is relatively very small still. Mm. Um, we we don't have a lot of staff. Mm-hmm. Um, we have one intern. You're an intern. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, right. and so we ha- we do have a um, we have a partnership with a school mm-hmm. where we work uh, together. I train the, right. the the students there right. to to of course produce for apothecary. Hmm. It's, it's, okay. a, it's a special school, mm-hmm. so uh, we figure that there's something like a CSR thing that we could mm. work with. Yeah. And it, it seems in so far it worked pretty well for us. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That partnership. Okay. So I mean, okay. See now. Now moving on to the main topic of why I actually want to speak with you. Mm. You're a young dude. Relatively, I mean you're young. Let's yeah. just compare to other people, other quote unquote directors of certain companies. Yeah. Uh, you, of, of such, especially such a quote unquote successful company, depending on who you ask. Um, <clears throat> what do you, I, I, I'm... You you employ you employ a lot of uh, young people. You see, I I don't see any quote unquote old people here. But those are my partners. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. So so, so the, I, I, right. yes, I do employ young people. Mm-hmm. That is also my my yeah. what I will do. Mm-hmm. What I will continue to do. Yeah. So yeah. But why why young people? I it it really has to do with drive. Hmm. I come from a company where and our average age was about twenty five mm-hmm. to twenty eight. Yep. The 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 
the the thing about about working with young people is one is that that if you get the chemistry right, if mm-hmm. you get the energy right, yeah. we we have the the drive is actually very high. Mm. The, in terms of of, of uh, how should I put it, uh, everybody moves really fast. Mm. At the same time, uh, when you deal with younger people, there's lesser baggage. Mm-hmm. Um, why I say so is when, when I, nothing to do with. It, it, nothing to do with, with not hiring older people. Some mm-hmm. older people are great, you know. It, yeah. it, they have experience. That's what we want experience. Yeah. Uh, same time, especially if you want to move fast, you want to have people who have lesser baggage, who could pick things faster, who has no prior uh, ways of doing things. So well, still open to learn. Yes. Without the without the, without the trappings of traditionalism. Well, I'll say so. Uh, mm-hmm. What well, traditionalism has its benefit. Mm. It, you need them and but at the same time you need balance in both areas so what can quote unquote older people offer compared to you know the young young, younger well, the, the millennials for, for one the, their experience their wealth of, of experience on, on how to expand all these things right are mm. very valuable mm. we we may be fast but we may be silly mm-hmm. or ignorant about a lot of things so so there are some blind spots which I don't see you mm. know so I do have like friends and partners who, who are a lot older who are more experienced in this matter so mm. they will be a bit more careful and they'll mm-hmm. see in different angles than I do uh, because when I want to move forward sometimes I just miss out on a lot of things mm. you know yeah so 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 yes uh, I would say you will want that up, but mm. they, if, let's say on a lower tier let's say uh, fresh bread and things i would love to have them on for like you know sales things because mm-hmm. they are very driven yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you consider yourself more of a young person or old person <laughs> i'm 28 this year so you're I 28 sh- yeah i should be young <laughs> yeah oh you're 28 yes so you're like 30 no i'm not i'm oh, 28 wow all right <laughs> oh, okay that's, that's quite young mm. So you, that means you must have been 26 when you started this? Yes. Wow, at such a young, like, when, as a, as, when you're 26, like, what, like, how did you, how, what, how did it feel, like, going on this quest to start this company with a product that you were not sure was going to sell? Scary. And, Very scary. And what made you take that leap? I think, I think partly uh, that, that I have to thank my partners mm. um, they, they, they were very supportive in, mm-hmm. in, in to build my to what I want to build mm. so so that's uh, that's the um, well there's a lot of uncertainty la, mm. in, in the things you do but at the same time right if you believe in your your product mm. at the same time right uh, this is to really I, I like the fact when, when I'm at the edge, you know, then you think of all kind of creative things to get you out of that. Out of that. Mm, yes. Yeah. You know, you'll find yeah. by hook or the, the, the yeah. things by hook or by crook, I'll get yeah, out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. you find different, different ways, lah. Mm. You know, mm. so, so, so I do think that you, you are the most creative when you are in. When you're stressed. When you're stressed, when you're at a, a mm. crossroad and, yeah. and you're thinking of a way to get out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, it actually has been the uh, research because you know how creative people are. We love to procrastinate. And then we procrastinate until it's like one hour before the deadline. And in that one hour, we come up with the most brilliant and most insane ideas ever. <laughs> it, it, something like that, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a yes or no. That, that uh, I yeah, I mean, something like that, yeah. But uh, could you give us an an example of what sort of challenges happen? Well, when you're pushed to age, like one, what ideas you come up with when well, pushed that age? We we we. Okay. Um, one thing that that we we work very well is when we work in lack. Hmm. In lack. So because the company is bootstrap, okay. So one thing we lack greatly is funding. Hmm. Okay. Like, yeah, understand the funding is the biggest thing mm-hmm. for us. The next was when we came out with product, um, we, we couldn't come out with like a perfect perfect product. Yeah, we were still growing. Mm. We just had to release the product first. Mm. And then along the way we, we the product was not at its like optimum like when we we're very happy. It, mm. it kept changing. Mm. As we go, even we were start retailing really we kept changing, we kept mm. improving it. 
I mean, we're still learning. At mm-hmm. the same time, in terms of marketing, what is the best way to, to market? To me, as when you're bootstrapped, you don't have a lot of funding. Hmm. The first instance is to make money. It's not to spend money. Yeah. Um, we. That's why ago, you know, when I'm stu- when we when I started in Malaysia, the first thing when you think when you look at Malaysia, it's actually very disheartening. You look at yes. the, the the buying power. You look at everybody. Yes. A lot of spending. It's very disheartening. Right? Mm. And if I am a victim of that, right, mm. then we'll be dead already. <laughs> Last year we we have gone already. But we, we decided that, okay, there is a possibility mm-hmm. that we are confident with our product, we are very happy mm-hmm. with our product. The first thing is, let's get out of Malaysia, let's sell it outside of Malaysia. There are so many shops outside of Malaysia, so many places outside of Malaysia mm-hmm. who have buying power. Hong Kong, for instance, mm-hmm. is like the first thing we went is Taiwan, we went to Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, I emailed those guys, you know, the cold call, and say, hey, you want to carry our product, mm. and I'll send you samples, and we talked to the guys, and then we said, okay, this is a great product, you know, mm. this is how you should sell it, and this is the possible angle, and they all loved it. And, and in Hong Kong, right, mm-hmm. one unit is sold for about 100 ringgit, 100 ringgit to 120 ringgit. Ooh, one unit, okay. right? The, in Hong Kong, the average meal uh, is about a 50 to 60 ringgit. Yes, yes. Average yeah. meal, 50 yeah. around there. Oh, so, oh yeah. So, so, so to, to the people in Hong Kong, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's, like, it's like what? It's just two meals. So it's, yeah, it's alright. Or one meal and a half. It's the equivalent of 20 ringgit here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so Malaysia, uh, on the other hand, will be like, oh, this is actually quite expensive for us. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you, you know, that's the thing yeah. we'll be questioning and all. You have so many questions, and then in the end of the day, I, I, I lose out because mm. you have a lot of questions in place before yeah. buying my product. So, so, we, we that's what we did. You know, we, we went out, and and that that is our way of, of hmm. getting out of the rut for, okay. for for making sales and all. all in right. the marketing, we put a lot of effort in, into of course on Facebook, on Instagram mm. and, and just to create that whole identity. Yeah. 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 So mm. we did not have a half a million to start working on our marketing and oh. ads. Okay. Alright. How how far into the the uh, how far after the birth of this company did you actually go overseas? We started in November twenty fifteen. Hmm. Our okay. first overseas order at first stock is in overseas in Taiwan was in January. Oh, okay. 16. So that was that the 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 idea came quite early lah into the development. Oh, you mean how far we 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 uh, the idea came and then the, the mm. product? Yeah. Okay. Um, the idea came in 2015 June. Okay. The we started selling it November mm. 2015. So it took us about four months plus mm-hmm. to to mm-hmm. from concept to yep. the whole. Yeah. Final product and uh, was it always the plan to ship it overseas? Yes. Or, oh, yes. Okay. The, it was always in the, in the plan in the right. pipeline. Hmm. Right. So your suggestion to uh, Malaysian companies with who want to sell good products go overseas. Is that what is that is that what you say? That I I, I would say I I think they open up your eye mm-hmm. the, your eyes if you're planning to to come out of a business and mm-hmm. all those things. You should really firstly do a lot of research mm-hmm. for your market. Okay. You need to study your market, you need to understand who is your market, mm-hmm. where is your market. Mm-hmm. It, it's not hard to come out with great products, right? Hmm. That, that's the thing, interestingly. Yes. Yep. It's harder to get sales channel. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's harder to get people to buy all the things. Mm. So, 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 you know, when you come out with products, you, you really need to think of your sales channel. Mm. Your, your Where are you going to sell it? Where is your market? Mm-hmm. What's the potential of it? Mm-hmm. You know? So, so... When I would say Asia would be a good market to look in. Southeast Asia is going to start, you know, mm-hmm. would be a great market yep. to look into. Uh, reason being, because right now with, with all the kind all of, you know, we, we are making things simpler, shipping is mm-hmm. simpler today, e- communication is simpler today, mm-hmm. right? So, so many things, even with the growth of, of internet and the internet and all the other things, right? So, mm-hmm. so things are moving very fast. And so so it's not hard to to go out mm. of, of Malaysia. So I would say if you have a product, you're confident, and you feel that that you you want to look into a market, don't don't just look into Malaysia. It's, mm. it's, you may be looking into a too, a market too small. Okay. Look wider. You might even some people might even look into Europe or 
the states or the entire world. I mean, that's mm. what we're looking at mm. in the next phase. Yep. Looking to, to the Western Hemisphere. The Western Hemisphere. Yeah. Ooh. But of course now, right now, we have competitors in the Western Hemisphere, which which we think they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's not, nothing that we want to uh, disrupt yet. Mm. So we feel that, that they have not, interestingly, they have not come to Asia mm -hmm. and they don't, they might not find Asia yeah. exciting mm. yet. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them did yes, but we have already gained a strong foothold in, in Asia countries mm -hmm. that, that right now we are the first in Asia, mm. technically. So so whoever comes later will have to like, yeah, fight well. the pie with us. <laughs> you're, you're the quote unquote monopoly. <laughs> right now we, mm. we're, we're doing pretty okay yeah, in okay. Asian countries. How do, you, how, do you, how do you think you stand in comparison with uh, ordinary Kelong of a film? Ordinary Kelong, you mean like those liquid ones? Mm. And you, any, anything, any uh, X, for example, uh, yeah. X is in Cologne. X is in Cologne. It's body spray. Oh, it's, okay. Sorry, I'll just edit this. I'll just edit this part out. Sorry, I don't know much about grooming, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Well, we we still we compared to a lot of, of brands, we are still quite. Um, we're not exactly big yet mm -hmm. in, in the industry. I mean, there are still a lot of people who are very dependable on, on other liquid perfumes. Liquid perfumes, yeah. yeah. Or then, okay, a lot of people use deodorant, but a lot mm -hmm. of people don't use perfume. Yeah, or cologne and things like that. So, so, uh, well, it will take some time for everybody to move on to that. But I, I guess the majority of our users are between 25, 25 to, to mm. 30. Yeah. So those are our average Asian mm -hmm. users. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Let's talk for a moment about your experiences with uh, the quote unquote millennials, the people born from 1981 to 1997. Your yeah. age group. Okay. Uh, as a, I mean, as a leader, you have to, you have to lead. You have to uh, yes. go, do a good example, and you also have to put a lot of work into into whatever you do. Yeah. Now, okay. I I actually have a list of like. I just want to get your opinion on this. I actually have a list of criticisms against millennials, okay. which, uh, uh, which which was uh, which I which I took partly from uh, Simon Sinek's interview with Inside Quest last year, December twenty second. He's a marketing consultant yeah. and author. Okay. A lot of, of what I hear a lot of old people saying, quote unquote old people, okay, uh, they're saying that millennials, people people like uh, you or between you and Joel's age, they are. Entitled, narcissistic, in a way that sort of fits in with the target audience of your product. In a way, because you are, in a sense, reaching out to their vanity. Mm -hmm. Would you say today's generation is to, is vain? <laughs> hmm. Interesting, vain. Well, I I I think it's it's very hard to gauge. Um, the the <coughs> the social ills of of today and last mm. time because they are very, we are very different yeah right the things we are exposed to are very different yeah I mean when you say about about you, you, when you say about about the, the social ills you say the the today's one are vain and all mm -hmm. you know I mean I could say our parents were were very face saving they were all scared that's true. You know, I could say true. many other things like like uh, the all this uh, mind your own business thing, yeah. and uh, I, I mean yeah. it has this I couldn't care less kind of mm -hmm. attitude. You know, mm -hmm. I could say that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's just a form of of, of general generalization. Mm -hmm. So I I don't think it's fully fair to say the millennials are all uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, vain. Mm -hmm. They are they are su they are they only care on the outlooks and all these things. Well. well in, in today's society, you adapt mm. to to whatever situation you are at. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you if you say that they're vain, I mean, if you don't dress properly in an interview, are you gonna get hired or not? That's true. If you, you, you more or less likely you are attractive because you you are properly mm -hmm. groomed and you yeah. you take care of your parents yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as for the the the, I mean. As for the like a lot of this, uh, what do you call that? Uh, selfies, blah, blah blah, you know all these things and all. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
it's it's it's, it's, it's like, I I get what you mean. It's hard it's hard to say. Yeah. 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 But, but I'm cool. I, I say if if you channel the energy mm-hmm. right, I mean if you ask okay. me, uh, I'm working with these people. If you channel the energy right, mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't see a big problem. I don't see the vain thing, right. the self yeah. self absorbed, the self entitled. No, they they still work for it, lah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if if you give yeah. them a a, a good mm-hmm. goal, the cool and quote strawberry generation. Strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> would say that, uh, but yeah, yeah. We, we we the idea is goal. I, mm. I think we today we are today we are in a generation where everybody is a champion of something. I'm championing mm. something. I'm championing yes. this. I believe in this. I believe yeah. in that. Mm. All these things. Last time they're not about that. Last time is today. You know, people are finding finding meaning in what they do. Mm. Last time we are finding survival in what we do. Yes. Because we were in war and blah yeah. blah and all these yeah. things. But but I mean, you're not in war today. Mm. You you want to find meaning in what you do. Mm-hmm. You want to find purpose mm. in what you do. Yeah, so it's pretty normal. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, I feel like yeah, millennials, myself included, like we can't. We, it's, we find it difficult to do stuff which we cannot find purpose in or find uh, our passion in. Yeah, but wait till you go to war and you know you need survival. Yes, then definitely. <laughs> would you say you are? Uh, which would you which which state would you say you are in now? What what state of mind? War or passion? Well, well, <laughs> I uh, to 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 be honest, mm-hmm. um, me. It's not so much of a passion that got me into this, you see. Mm. Well, I, I, I'm an opportunist. Mm. I see an opportunity, mm-hmm. I have to take it, mm-hmm. and I will, I will do it. Mm. And, you know, I think that there's something that would, would, I would learn something out of it, mm-hmm. I would also grow from it. Yeah. At the same time, I'll get a better life of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so to me, I, I, it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm also married, and mm. I'm a father. Yeah. So, so. So to me, it's, it's very important. My family is pretty important. Mm. You know, I, I need to make sure I provide for my family. At the same time, uh, you know, I, I want to create a, a better life for myself. Mm. And then, yeah. You, you, you would you say millennials are quite adaptable? You, you were talking about adaptability and channeling yeah. the right energy yeah. into the right places. Yeah, they, they are. How would you say, for example, m- me as a as a potential employee, okay. how would you recommend I do that right now? How do I change my life to do that? We, we, the, the thing is, is because today's, um, the youth today, right, are, um, mm. are very intelligent, mm. uh, far more intelligent, I, I really think. You know, I mean, a lot of people would say that the youth today is really far more intelligent because of, of the information that you all possess today. Mm. So, so, the, 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 in order to better yourself, I, I really think it's number one, there's a lot of research, a lot of study, you know. Mm-hmm. So if I want you to learn something, I would give you a book and ask you, hey, go, go read about it mm-hmm. and go study it and find all kinds of, of solutions for it and you would do that, mm. you know. So 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 it's, it's really about doing a research and, mm-hmm. and, and well, that's why I believe in yeah. doing proper research, study and you know, all mm-hmm. these things. Which today, you know, you, you can find information from everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Any any last final words of advice for our listeners from uh, from your experiences marketing a product and being a director? Well, I, I think I think whoever is thinking about venturing into business mm-hmm. or, or starting your own business for your own, uh, I, I I know people talk about hey you know you, you gotta reach for your dreams you know think yes. big <laughs> think big yes yes I I, I I I want to challenge that actually the the idea oh. is to think realistic. Is you think big, but you need to think realistic. Mm. We, I, I know people who, who thought big. You know, I want to do, I want to mm. make like the million dollar company, blah blah blah. And then, mm. and then they, then they question, okay, uh, but I, I need funding. Uh, mm. So, so yep. they, and then there's no funding. I cannot do this. You know, mm. all your, 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 your problems are your, your, your mm. chains. You think. Yep. But, but we were thinking big, but at the same time we were very realistic. Mm. What do we need to do to achieve that? If okay. we couldn't do this, we have no funding. We right. have to find a way, other way to make sure that we get that money in. So, so a lot of people want to start a unicorn company, mm. but I, I'm I'm quite into the subscription of a cockroach company. Harder to kill. Uh. <laughs> last longer. We don't make yes. so much. Mm-hmm. Really we last longer. Yeah. And we, yeah. we 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 survive lah. Right. I mean, so as long as you don't smell like shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. As as long as you you really. Uh, well, be realistic about what you do, and, yeah. and a dream is good enough, and all that. Mm. So just don't don't dream, 
I, I know it's very controversial. <laughs> don't, don't dream too big. I, I'm not saying don't dream too big. I'm just saying that be realistic in what you dream and, mm-hmm. and don't. And even if you dream already, you have to have an action plan mm. and a proper strategy on how you're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. And on. yeah, if you have a problem, then find a, mm. another way to do it, yeah, yeah. Very practical advice. Yeah. But you know, the, it, it's it's this type of advice it's hard to come by. Mm. <laughs> it's not very marketable. No, it's not. Yeah, I yeah. mean, people like dream big, you <laughs> know, follow your dreams and all. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you for coming on to Bubblegum. This has been an interesting talk. My name is Simon Wu and this has been Adrian Chong, Chong, yes, director of the Apothecary. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. All right, all right.